Let's first of all, uh, instead of starting with the with the general stuff about the Tenth Amendment and decentralization, let, let's start with specifics and what you guys have been focused right. on very recently. First of all, describe for us very briefly what are the objection, the most objectionable aspects of this National Defense Authorization Act. Let's do that in brief, and then secondly, what is the Tenth Amendment Center been doing about that? In very brief. Our view is that when you remove due process from the equation, uh, indefinite detention, as they call it, is nothing more than government-sanctioned kidnapping. So we oppose kidnapping, whether it's done by an individual or a group of individuals uh, you know, claiming to have power over us. And what we're doing about it, we're working with states and local communities and individuals at every level to try to basically say, no, we will not comply or do things to that will, in the long run, uh, nullify this thing and stop it. So describe for us the, what's going on in the country. Now, there is, a, there is a Virginia bill that recently passed the Virginia Senate that basically said there's going to be non-cooperation between any Virginia official and the federal government trying to enforce these provisions of the NDAA. Uh, maybe you could talk about that for just a second and then tell us what, what else – is there anything else pending in the country? Are they exactly like the Virginia bill? Are they different? What's going on out there? Tom, I know in the past, I don't know if you've done this on the shift show, but uh, have talked about how the, the Real ID Act uh, met a lot of resistance on a state level. In fact, 25 states stood up and said, no, we're not going to comply with this law. But that law was passed in 2005, and state-level resistance didn't really start moving until about two years later. So if we're talking about what's going on with the NDAA that was signed by Barack Obama just on uh, December 31st, 2011, it just took a matter of days before people started saying, wow, you know what, I don't like what the federal government did. I need to start doing something on a state or a local level. So I think the education on the principles of decentralization is really getting out there. People know that the first response in many situations is to look closer to home to try to stop it. So yes, Virginia has a bill called House Bill 1160. It first passed the House 96 to 4. Then it went into the Senate and uh, it was like a 2020 vote to basically you know put it off till next year. Within 24 hours, all kinds of groups and grassroots activists pounded on the state senate there in virginia and it passed 39 to 1 there's just a small amendment that needs to be concurred i think it's happening today so anyone in virginia or know anyone in virginia house bill 1160 is basically saying hey you know what and bob marshall the the guy who sponsored sponsored the bill he basically said look back in, during the japanese internment there's a lot of bad stuff that happened to quote detain people and by this bill the, the Commonwealth of Virginia says they will not participate in any way in a modern-day effort. This isn't what we would consider a full nullification bill, because they aren't basically saying we're going to try to stop the federal agents. But we recognize that the federal government requires states and local communities to comply in many ways, provide information sharing, logistics, maybe sheriffs to block roads so the federal agents can go through, and states or local communities uh, you know, not complying, not going along with that, can go a long way into making it very difficult for the feds to force these laws down our throats. So uh, there's Virginia, there's seven or eight other states. I know Arizona just had a similar bill pass out a committee. Tennessee has a bill, uh, Senate Bill 2669, I think it is, that explicitly refers to these types of federal acts as kidnapping and proposes felony charges. So a sheriff would be required to arrest a federal agent in Tennessee for trying to kidnap people living in that state. Lots of things happening. And even uh, seven uh, you know, counties, towns, uh, uh, also passed resolutions already to say, no, we're not going to comply with uh, this uh, kidnapping power. Now, given that the president has said that in his view, you don't have to worry about it because the NDAA doesn't cover American citizens. This is we're just getting all concerned about nothing. Uh, do you think that therefore all these efforts now have borne the fruit that they need to bear and now we can just forget about it? It's, it's safely resolved. Yeah, we're good. The president said everything's going to be fine. We're all free. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I generally find that a presidential statement, you, you can just take that to the bank. You can take that to the fractional reserve bank. Oh, yeah, we're set. We're, you know, liberty is, is growing. Barack Obama says that no one's going to get black bagged and taken away. So we're all good. Uh, let's just, uh, wrap it up and start shopping. But you know, the bottom line, I think, Tom, you know as well as I do, that uh, these people are not to be trusted. Federal power always grows no matter what they tell us. They campaign on all kinds of wonderful things all the time. They campaign, you know, the peace president campaigned on a peace message, and look what he's done. Uh, so 
I don't think we should really trust these people. It doesn't take a real creative John Yu to look at sections 1021 and 1022 and recognize that this can be applied very, very widely by really bad people. And maybe even in the future, even though Obama said he's not going to apply this to U.S. citizens, uh, he may decide that there's a, an extreme emergency and that that power exists. So, wow, I'm really sorry, but I had to change my mind. Now, Mike, we got about a minute and a half till till our uh, first break, but – I want to uh, share a little anecdote with you and then get your thoughts. I gave a speech in uh, Iowa earlier this year, and the subject of the NDAA came up. And this was a group of people, I would say maybe a third of them were Ron Paul people, but most of them were pretty standard uh, Tea Party, right of center, GOP types of people, uh, old, older crowd. And And I thought the NDAA was only of interest to the Ron Paul people and maybe a few people on the left, and that was it. Everybody in this room was concerned about it. didn't matter where they stood on the war on terror. Their view was, look, at, enough's enough. At some level, there are some things that we have to say just simply cannot be done. So you have been talking to people, on the other hand, on the left. And when we come back in this break, I want to find out, is that bearing fruit? Because usually you talk to the left and they hear the word states and they immediately think slavery and all this other stuff. I want to know how that's going because we all are going to have to come together to fight this thing regardless of these labels that divide us. We're going to have to come together to fight this thing. All right, everybody, stick around here on the Peter Schiff Show. We're going to be talking more to Michael Bolden. But don't go anywhere. 855-4-SHIFT. That's 855-472-4433. The Peter Schiff Show, gold standard in talk radio. The Peter Schiff Show. To President Obama, Secretary Geithner, Madame Pelosi, and all of the socialist econ professors across America, we're sorry. We're sorry. Peter Schiff is back on the air. We are indeed back on the Peter Schiff Show. Tom Woods in for Peter, joined by Michael Bolden of the Tenth Amendment Center, whom you should visit at TenthAmendmentCenter.com, spelling out Tenth. TenthAmendmentCenter.com is a great source of information about uh, not only what's going on in the world today in terms of uh, federal government versus the states, decentralization of power, but also it's a good source you can read up to understand uh, you know, what are the arguments in favor of this, the, the American history behind it. There's a lot of suppressed history behind this movement, and suppressed history is always the best because they're always keeping it from you for some what they consider to be some good reason. All right, uh, so, so Michael, before the break, we were talking about this uh, National Defense Authorization Act, and I was saying that it even alarms people who might have otherwise fairly conventional right-of-center views who have even, are even saying, now, this is just, they're saying that, that this is just too much. Uh, what do you find mm -hmm. on the left? Uh, have, do you find a similar, like, are they willing to work with you guys at the Tenth Amendment Center, or do they say, no, 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 you people are too libertarian or something, and we can't uh, soil ourselves by being next to you? No, they absolutely – well, we found at least so far some groups that are basically saying, you know, we don't care what the process is. We need to stop this thing. So we actually formed uh, a coalition and held a media conference just about uh, a little over a week ago uh, with one organization. And I guess it would be kind of middle of the road, Bill of Rights Defense Committee, but one – another one that is definitely not libertarian or to the right, uh, a group uh, – I think it's maybe a million members strong called Demand Progress. So the three of us had a joint press conference with a uh, Naomi Wolf a former Gore uh, advisor, Bruce Fine, who worked with the Reagan administration, now with Ron Paul, to basically talk about how the, we can stop this thing on a state and local level. We had state legislators, local uh, councilmen from around the country talking about bills that they've been introducing or working to get passed in their area. And the language that we used, Tom, that I think is most surprising that Demand Progress and Bill of Rights Defense Committee signed on was to nullify the NDA. They didn't say we want to overturn it or repeal it. The effort is to nullify it. So maybe they don't have the same meaning we do, but they had no fear of the word. They had no fear of signing on. And uh, they're out there spreading the word. And we're planning on doing a follow-up with a number of other legislature, legislators around the country uh, in the next week or so, too. Now, how can you guys promote the idea of nullification, which you should define for us first, uh, but how can you promote this when doesn't the Constitution say that federal law trumps state law? I mean, what's the matter with you? Read read the thing, yeah, man. We're a bunch 
<laughs> the best way to put it is when we premiered the uh, the nullification documentary at CPAC just a couple of weeks ago, we got a review over an Esquire that basically called us a bunch of idiots. Uh, the quote was, Thomas Jefferson, that guy was just a wackadoo. So I guess if Esquire thinks we're a bunch of idiots, we're doing things right. So oh, yeah. one star from Esquire means five star from constitutionalists all around the country. Right. So we're doing a good job on that. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, federal law being supreme, I mean, it's only supreme if it passed in pursuance, if laws are passed in pursuance of those powers delegated to the federal government in the Constitution, that's what the so-called supremacy clause has to say. So we believe that most everything the federal government does is not authorized, so therefore almost nothing they do is supreme, and it's up to we the people collected in each of our states to stand up and do what a three-year-old does all day long and say no to the feds. We just need more of that. When you look in the state ratifying conventions, you repeatedly hear objections to the Constitution that this supremacy clause that that says that uh, all laws made in, in pursuance of this Constitution will be the supreme law of the land. There's this concern that, well, this is going to lead to all kinds of terrible outcomes and terrible laws being imposed on us. But repeatedly in the ratifying conventions, and that that's what counts, those people were assured, yeah, but you're, you're, you're not paying enough attention to the caveat, which is all laws which shall be made pursuant, in pursuance of the Constitution. That's the important caveat, so it's important for you to, you to mention that. But in in two sentences or one sentence, just for the – let's assume that we've got some listeners who've never heard this idea of nullification. What is it? Mm-hmm. Well, it's any act or set of acts which has as its result a particular federal law being rendered null, void, or unenforceable in a certain area. And we actually take it even further than just state nullification, trying to render something null and void on a state level. We recognize that this is something that can be done on a county level. There are uh, five towns in Maine that have passed what are called Food Freedom Acts. Maybe it's four. Uh, so it can apply to basically anything the federal government does that it shouldn't be doing basically all of it, and it can apply on a state level, a local level. I mean, if you really get down to it, and we had a lot of time to talk, we could talk about individual level nullification, but that might be a different interview. Uh, well, indeed, yeah, there's a there's a great uh, Mencken essay, I think, where he says that ultimately that's that's what we want to get down to, is is, is the individual being able to say no, uh, and, and, I, and also Herbert Spencer and some others. But what else, I mean, other than the NDAA, I mean, you guys are not just a one-trick pony. How long you've you've been around since two thousand six? Two thousand. Yeah, we we were around back when Bush was doing all kinds of horrible stuff, and that's when it was just me doing, you know, setting up as a blog, hoping that I could reach a few people. But it caught on that the Patriot Act was bad, the Real ID Act was bad, No Child Left Behind, unconstitutional wars, and now the new president taking all that to the another to the next level. Uh, it it catches on that we. Uh, have to do something about it and it's not just voting bums out because all we get are new bums well so what else what other issues are you guys focused on well, the big ones, I would say, first of all, NDAA is a big one. It crosses the political divide, and it gets people, as you've seen in Iowa on the right, and if we've seen with people like Demand Progress from the left, and that's really what it takes to make a movement. We also see the same type of convergence in trying to reject unconstitutional searches and seizures by the TSA. Uh, there's also been 10 states that have passed what is known as a Health Care Freedom Act uh, to basically try to ban a health insurance mandate on a state level. There's 16 states that are rejecting the federal government's laws on weed. And uh, this is a great success story. We can see that, you know, when enough people say no to Washington, D.C., and enough states actually pass laws to back those people up, you can have a real big effect. We just want to apply this to basically everything, gun rights, health freedom, uh, food freedom, uh, the TSA, NDAA, and the rest. Aren't you concerned the federal government will come in and and, uh, punish recalcitrant states? Well, I mean, uh, they do threaten to do that all the time. And in fact, back when uh, the Real ID resistance uh, got real heavy uh, back a few years ago, there was an interview. The, the former governor, or maybe he's current, of Montana was famously uh, asked on NPR. They said, you know, uh, they're threatening to say that if you guys don't follow this Real, Real ID Act, the citizens of Montana aren't going to be able to go to a federal building. They're not going to be able to fly. What do you think about that? And the governor said, Democrat, mind you, he said, well, we think it's best to just tell them to go to hell and we'll govern our state the way we want to govern our state. And there were no tanks that rolled into Montana forcing people to get new IDs. We just think we need to have a little more of that type of attitude around the country.